Johnny Orlando Jr., the antibiotic resistant metal show. I'm here with both Exodus and Creator together as one. This is a uh, this is an interesting metal round table. Um, how's the tour going so far, guys? Been kick ass. Yeah, I mean, it's like been really, really good. And I mean, you got two, you know, thrash metal, you know, groups of old thrash metal farts out together. <laughs> you know, so it makes for a really good tour. It's been awesome, and everybody's having a good time. The crowd's been killer. So. And when you guys all started, did you imagine that you would be doing this, you know, 25, 30 years yes, later? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> I he's, looked he's, at the magic ball. And <laughs> yeah, the magic ball of metal that in all the old band photos we all used to hold, you know. <laughs> yeah. the invisible, invisible, the invisible grapefruit of metal. Oh, you know? We didn't know what we were doing. We were just playing the metal we liked, influenced by the bands we loved. and. Yeah. And you know, this many years later, would it, I've thought it'd be some resurgence? No, I mean, there are points in my life I didn't think I'd still be here, period, you know, just due to substance abuse and shit like that, you know, but standing alive, healthy, relatively. Right. And uh, enjoying it, and this tour is just awesome, and the kids are responding, and like, I'm sure it's the same for them. Our audience now, especially in like America, is like it's so young now. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of our fans aren't the old grizzled suckers from the yeah, '80s, the but they're like yeah. 18 yeah. years old, you know? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's it's great to see all all all, all like different. Like we have, on, on, especially in Europe, I've, I've noticed that in the front rows are always like the younger kids, yeah. and in the back there's like the older guys. Yeah, and. It's just great that you know we talked to some of our old friends that came to see us in um, Cleveland, and it is like that. Sometimes you know they get into a band like our friends told us, I, I'm, I'm getting into this band and they're half our age. Mm -hmm. But you know if they if they if they're really <laughs> yeah if they if they're, if they're really good, it doesn't matter. You right. know I mean metal's always been a, a, a form of music that um, should be played by people that are either young or feel young. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. So uh, you've been quoted as saying that um, the world is a better place with Exodus in it. <laughs> sure. What else? Yeah, what else would be a better would be better with Exodus in it? Uh, <laughs> Adriana Lima would be better with this part of Exodus. In it. <laughs> well, you have you've had uh, Exodus has had uh, I believe you have twenty three past and current members. No, it can't be that many. Ooh, no. After Kirk left. Oh, right, we okay. hired Mike <laughs> Mong, we have Mike. and then Mike we fired. Even though yeah, he went on to star in like a, you know, a band that was almost ready to blow up big, but they were a funky band called the Freaky Executives. So he went for, <laughs> and so he always said, "I played the heaviest band in the world and the funkiest band." That's awesome. So he had these really this yin and yang going. Then Evan McCaskey, who played two gigs with us, okay, amazing guitar player, would have been, went on to be one of the best in the world ever seen, but he killed himself, and. uh and then it was Rick, and you know, it was Rick all the way up until the last okay, two hours. Got Rick, okay, uh, former bassists, can you name them? Carlton Lee, Jeff Andrews. Carlton Lee, I never played Carlton, in the well, band. I got with. Carlton Melson. Well, yeah, he went by Carlton Lee as middle okay. name. He was a little more rock, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> Carlton <laughs> Lee. Okay. But I never played in the band with Carlton. He was gone when I joined, and it was Jeff Andrews until Kirk left for Metallica. Mm -hmm. And then we cleaned house, so to speak, and Jeff was a great guy, but he was a mediocre player. And, and we got Paul's roommate, Robbie, and converted him from guitar player to a bass player. Right. Um, uh, Mike Butler and Jack Gibson. Tom, well, Tom Hunting. Right. What? He was our, he was our original singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He sang and I played was, drums. Yeah. The He's the best singer in the band. He's amazing. <laughs> All right, uh, there's another guy named John Vanderhoof who never even did a show with us. John right. Tempesta and Paul Bostaff. Oh, and Paul Bostaff played with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Drummers not appearing on studio None. albums. Perry Strickland? Perry Strickland. No, he filled in when Tom was sick. Gun, I, he was never a member of the band. Yeah. <laughs> Gannon Hall and, and Chris Nick Barker. Yeah, and Gannon Hall and Nick Barker. <laughs> nice, see? Everybody knows who's been in Exodus. Yeah, you, you know, did. We, you he actually did own, pretty darn well. I'm, you can I'm, start your own uh, six degrees of separation kind of thing. With yeah, Exodus. six degrees from and Exodus. You can link a musician to every band, past and present, all the way back to like you know MC5 and yeah, the right. Stooges. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you tell me 
why is David Hasselhoff so fascinating to the Germans? Ask the Germans. I don't know. I mean, for that for that, for that part, we we don't, for that part, we don't. But why is Jerry Lewis so popular in France? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Lewis. Yeah. Uh, the, the comedian, the yeah, American. He's, he's, also, s- he's also big in Germany. Oh, is yeah. he? Well, yeah, 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 they yeah, just yeah. love him, you know? It's like... I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, um, David Hasselhoff is... Uh, it's because of Night Rider, to tell the truth. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's not near as interesting as a video of him trying to eat a hamburger when oh, he was yeah. shot oh, yeah. Yeah. his daughter <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. And what do they call German shepherds in Germany? Schäferhund. Schäferhund? Yeah, shepherd dog. Oh. Yeah. There you go. There's my new thing for today. <laughs> Learn something every day. Say yeah. it. <laughs> so, Schäferhund. Schäferhund. Yeah. Schäferhund. Yeah. Schäferhund. You guys, uh, Creator has changed. You guys have experimented with a lot of different styles and, and whatnot over the years. And, you know, you're kind of steering back to, I think, sort of your roots now. What what made you decide to change your I sound think, at those yeah, different times? It's, it, well, I don't know. This sounds like we have completely changed our style. We have always remained creator in, in the um, in the the basics of the band has always been the same it was just that in the 90s of course being kind of like you know we have recorded an album like every two or three years mm-hmm. and we ran out of ideas in the beginning of the 90s to write new fresh songs and mm-hmm. so um, we have Actually, we have like one very experimental album, which was called Enorama. We had to have a little bit of it, it's, which is our tribute to, to the um, wave and, and stuff that we were listening to when we were kids. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I would say that um, most of those records that we recorded, some of them are not as fast as others, and some of them have a little slightly different edge to it, like Renewal. Mm-hmm. People consider that like to be such a different album from anything else that we've done, but I think um, it was it has this it had a different concept. Mm-hmm. We were trying not to write so many complicated riffs and go do something more basic. Mm-hmm. And um, so musically, it wasn't so far off of what we've done back back um, in the day. But it was definitely something that people wouldn't have expected for us at that point in time. Mm-hmm. And looking back at it, in my opinion, it's it's still creator. So if you guys faked your death, what would you do afterward? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> people don't know that we 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 would. People don't, people don't know you're still alive. Like, like Elvis did. Like Elvis did. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's alive. I definitely go somewhere quiet. I think mm-hmm. if I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I didn't, I wouldn't know a reason why I would. Why would we have to fake all that? I don't know. I mean, if I had to get away from it all, you know, I mean, I've got... A shady promoter, perhaps? I don't know. I'd kill kill the promoter. (laughs) Uh, Me, you know, if, you know, it's it's a scenario I couldn't see myself in. I have two daughters, and I'm not going to fake my death and disappear. But if I was in a situation where I do it, I'd just, like, disappear to South America and open up a little beachfront bar kiosk, you know, and just sit there in in Paradise, Brazil. Yeah, um... Um, Brill. He's got a hotel. Yeah, he's got a hotel that's opening, and uh, I'd just sit there and I'd pour drinks and yeah. hang out on, you know, under a little umbrella and sell caipirinhas and nice and uh, Kinshasa to beachgoers and stare at lovely ladies in bikinis all day. <laughs> well, so you've got kids, so you've obviously learned how to thumb wrestle. <laughs> no, not really. I don't know. I've got two daughters, you know, which is the curse of a former man whore, you know. Do you guys think you could beat me in a thumb wrestling match? What, what, you, what You're is this obsessed with thumb wrestling. What is thumb wrestling? I'm sure you can beat the guy. The guy. Yeah, 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 right. Well, you go, all right. So you go, well, you start out, you go, one, two, three, four. Well, you do it eight times. And I declare a thumb war. Five, six, seven, eight. Time to raise the flag of hate. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what you get for asking all these stupid questions. <laughs>